Proverbs, yeah. in, a, in a particular version, it says mm. that the, the godly man's life, the godly person's life is yes. exciting. Yeah. And, and really I know is. we can testify to that. No. <laughs> yeah, we, really live, we live exciting lives. <laughs> Each one of us who've been through a, a 18 months of, of <laughs> pandemic, <laughs> yeah, it's we can declare it's an exciting <laughs> life that we live. It really is. And so, you know, that segues lovely into the message today. And the title of the message today is, wait for it, Thanks Living. Thanks Living. Thanks Living, Michelle. Yeah. Mm. Thanks Living. I'll, I'll explain as we go along, right? And um, Thanks Living, it, 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 it's huge. It, um, thanksgiving is a lifestyle, a, a, a habit, a, a tendency, a, an attitude of thanksgiving is a lifestyle that we, you, can choose. Yeah. We can choose that yeah. to have an attitude of thanksgiving all the time. And that's why we entitled this Thanks Living. <laughs> it's a life, it, a life, a life style, of thanksgiving. A lifestyle yeah. of thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, I want you to turn, turn with me to 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 to 18 in the Passion Translation. And I'm going to read it for you. It's going to be up on the screen. And it says, it says, make your life a prayer. Verse 18 says, and in the midst of everything, woo, really? And in the midst of everything, be always giving thanks. For this is God's perfect plan for you in Christ Jesus. Wow. I'm going to say that again. It was so good. Make your life a prayer. Your whole life is a prayer. Your entire life a prayer. It's not like well, when I go to church, when I go to a service, then I pray. Or when I spend my time with the Lord in the morning or whenever, then, that, that, then I pray. And those things are good. Mm -hmm. But it says make your whole life a prayer. Yeah. Your whole life you offer up to him. And, and, we say and. And. And in the midst of everything, be always giving thanks for this is God's perfect plan for you in Christ Jesus. You might say, oh, I don't understand that. That don't make any sense, Michelle. I mean, I mean, you know, in all ways in all, and all circumstances, in the midst of everything, give thanks. And this is God's perfect plan for me. You know, many people say, what's God's perfect plan for me? Well, this is it. God's perfect plan for you in Christ Jesus is for you to have an attitude of thanksgiving, to always be giving mm -hmm. thanks in him. Thanks to him, even in the midst of. Yeah. You know, sometimes we don't have to understand everything. You know, sometimes we're like, oh, well, I want to yeah. understand and break it down. If God says it, that's the way it is. I'm going to follow his direction. Yeah. And as it goes along, I'll probably get to see what he means yeah. and reap the fruit of it. Because the, the commandments of God, even though uh, sometimes they don't make sense, <laughs> yeah. but uh, when you do them, you see why. Yeah. Yes. He told you to do that. Yes, exactly. You understand the, the reason behind yes. uh, the command. Yeah. But we trust him. We trust him. That's what faith is. Faith is taking the step, doing that which he's told you to do, even if you don't understand, and most quite often you won't understand, but even if it doesn't make human logical yeah. sense. Oh, boy, I'm, I'm about to preach something really good. Anyway, I will, that's what for he tells time. you, what he tells you, it mm. so often yes. goes completely that's reverse exactly. or in the other direction of what that's the world so system good. tells Absolutely. you, what you learn through other people. Yes. It goes completely opposite, opposite. to that, what mm. God tells you to do. Oh, boy. Hmm. Anyway, I've got to keep going. You see, the Lord sees our thanksgiving. He sees it. Yeah. He sees our attitude, a lifestyle of thanksgiving. He sees our thanksgiving. It's major for him. It's massive for him. It's not, it's not like, oh, well, yes, thank, they're polite. You yeah. know, that's, oh, that's a nice thing. They said thank you. That's polite. That's, you know, it makes me feel good. That's polite. It's not, it's not just that. It's not that. Mm -hmm. It's massive. It, he feels, it's, it's, 
it's just, he just glories over it. He delights in it. Yeah. And he's like, whoa, I see you. I see this person. I see this woman. I see this man. I see this child. I see this teenager. Mm-hmm. I see this young adult. I see this elderly person. And they're living their lives in constant thanksgiving to me. I see that. And it opens your life up to more. Yeah. And now the reason why we're giving thanks is, like, okay, if I give thanks and I'm going to get more. No, mm-hmm. because he can tell that too. Yeah. You know, we talked about last week, we talked about having a divided heart and that God can see yeah. your motive. He can see it. Yeah. You, you can't pull the wool over in God's eyes. Everything is exposed to him. Yeah. So it's not like, oh, I'll give thanks. I'll say thank you. That means I'll get more. I think it's something you could measure. Um, it's... it's uh, a characteristic mm-hmm. of the new creation, of the new people that we are in Christ Jesus, yes. is thanksgiving. Yes. Is that we give thanks, even in the midst of, of what seems to be something disastrous. I know, I want to tell a story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, uh, we give thanks. Exactly. Because that's our nature, that's part of our, who yes. we are right now. Yes. So check yourself. Give thanks anyway. Yeah. If you don't because feel like Because it's a like step it. of faith. Exactly. Yeah, it's, just, mm-hmm. it's, it's mm-hmm. trust, confidence. In God. In God, yes. And we, live, we walk by faith and not by sight. Absolutely. Not by our five senses. Yeah. Oh, boy. And as I said, the Lord sees someone who is an attitude, who has a lifestyle of thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. That's why we called it thanks living. You see, it's not natural, as you, as you, as you, as you rightly uh, said, uh, Pastor Robin. It's not natural for us to be, it's not a natural thing for us to be thankful in every circumstance it's not a natural human nature yeah human nature does not naturally go to giving thanks in every circumstance it does it just doesn't it's natural in when i say natural i mean in in our in our human nature yeah. it, it's natural for us to be focused on to concentrate on looking at what we don't have what's not working the bad thing that happened the thing that happened that's inconvenient, the person that's really getting on my last nerve. Mm -hmm. Our natural uh, human nature propensity is to focus on that and look at it and be thinking about it and then talking about it all the time, talking about it. Well, you know what? Oh, gosh, girl, you know, I don't know. I have this or I don't have that or what I wish I had and how come they have it mm-hmm. and I don't have it and, and you know, or, or the boss or the, you know, whatever, you know, the, the, and, and to focus on that. That's human nature. Yeah. But I believe God is saying, I believe God is saying, I want you to make a shift on purpose. He wants us to make a shift on purpose. You know, for believers in Christ, we have been given a divine nature through Mm -hmm. his promises. We've been given an undivided heart, as we've been talking about, and and we've we've learned to to, to check when we make slices in our undivided heart, when we make cuts in it by doing things that compromise our relationship with God. But separate to that, as well as that, we have his divine promises, it says in 1 Peter 2, I think, that his divine promises enables us to participate in his divine nature. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on, somebody. So I believe that God wants us to make a shift, you know, and unless we engage with him, because we can live through life, go into heaven, but miserable. Mm -hmm. We're going to heaven because we we ask the Lord to be our savior, receive what he did, but we go through the rest of this earth life in a miserable state. And that's not that's not his plan for us. Yeah. So I believe God wants us to make a shift on purpose. Uh, remember, it's the entire renewal of my our mind. That's yeah. another thing we've been talking about, an entire renewal of mind. And just as you were saying that when it says renew your mind, have an entire renewal of our minds, it means that the way that we've grown up in Adam until we've been born again, Mm -hmm. the things that we learn, the way to think that we've been learned through our growing up in in Adam, I'm going to say that, in our our natural life, Mm -hmm. before we were born again, and on the world system that is around us, has taught us yeah. to think certain uh, in yeah. a particular way. 
and to make decisions because yeah. of those thought patterns in the way we think, the way we do things, the conversations that we have. But God is said, telling us, have an entire renewal of your mind. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, Jesus said in the word, uh, I think it's in Matthew. Anyway, that he says, you say, yeah, da, da, da. yeah. but I say, yeah. and he kept saying it, you say, whatever, you say, don't mm. commit adultery. Yeah. But I say, yeah. even if you look at a woman with lust in your heart, you've committed yeah. adultery. He's teaching us the new way. Yeah. Yeah. Entire renewal of the way we think. Yeah. And it's what we're looking at too. That's right. Um, like a, th a lifestyle of thanksgiving. Yes. It's, uh, it, it's determined by what you're looking at. Yes. If you're, you're looking at. Focused on, yeah, what if what you're focused on. Yeah. If what you're focused on. Yeah. If what you're focused on is what you don't have. Yeah. Then. It's difficult to give thanks. Yes, yeah. But if you're focusing on what God has done for you yes. and the things that God has promised you, yes. um, then you have no, uh, there's no other response than to thank God. <laughs> exactly. Because he's done such wonderful, tremendous, glorious things so good. for each one of us. So good. And, 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 and you know, the, the, it, it says in the word, let the weak say, I am strong. Now, yeah. in, the, in the world and how we've grown up in yeah. Adam, before we're born again, it's like, if you're weak, you say, keep saying you're weak. Yeah. And if you're, if you're poor, keep saying I'm poor. But he says, let the weak say, I, let the weak say, yeah. I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Yeah. It's an entire renewal yeah. of the way that we think. And it's and all, so, all yes. from... Uh, from the relationship with God, with God you're not yes. just saying you're it out of, out of uh, just yeah, saying it. letting it materialize no, out of the words that you say, no, no. but it's because it's based on, on who what, God is and what, he said. what he's promised you yes, uh, and his nature, that, that yes. what he says he will do. Absolutely, absolutely. And so start saying, thank you, Lord, for what I do have, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. For whatever I do have, whatever you do have, thank you, Lord, for whatever I do have. And stop complaining about what I don't have. Yeah. Hmm. It, 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 what he's calling us to do is this, to, to, into is this life of thanks living. And, and, and yeah. maybe you're, you're a person that you operate in this. You always do this. And that bless you. Yeah. There's always more. And for those of us who maybe you forgot this through the hard times, through mm -hmm. the difficult times, through this time of, of pandemic and lockdown and state of emergency and all the different things that are yeah. going on. And, and some people have gone through very, very difficult times. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not discounting that. But it, it, I'm saying in spite of that, yeah. I'm not dishonoring the, the fact that you're going through a bad time. You're going through, you've had horrible things happen to you. Maybe loved ones have passed away, you know, or, or, or loved ones have become sick, or maybe you became sick, or all these things. I'm saying in spite of that, mm -hmm. in spite of that, in spite of it. It's a hard thing to hear yeah. because you say, oh, no, we want compassion. It's with all the compassion in our hearts. We're saying, yeah. live a life of thanks living yeah. to God. It's the thanksgiving is to God. To view our lives through this mindset, not an occasional thing. When, when I say it's thanks living, it's not an occasional thing. Well, every so often I throw a thank yeah. you at God, you know. Every so often I say, well, thank you, you know, thank you, Lord, mm -hmm. because, you know, I know I'm supposed to. But yeah. it's, it's, it's a lifestyle. Yeah, you can, you're not complaining 50% of the time and yeah. thank God the rest of the time. Yes. You're, you, you do it, it's a constant yeah. attitude of thanksgiving absolutely, to God. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's go to Psalm 136. Psalms one, Psalm one thirty six, and we're going to look at verse one to four. Let uh, and uh, before I say that, let this be let Psalm one thirty six. Let this be our address. When I say our address, we live here. Mm -hmm. We live in a lifestyle of thanksgiving. Yeah. It says, "Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. Why? For He is good. For His mercy and loving kindness endure forever." Verse two. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods for his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords for his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. To him who alone does great wonders for his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. I encourage you. When, when this uh, meeting, when this service is finished or when, and when you have time, not now, when you have time, 
Go to Psalm 136 and read the whole thing. Not now again, because yeah. we've got some stuff yeah. to share with you. It's important that you get it and, and focus on it. But read the whole of Psalm 136. Because you see, it commences with thanking God for who he is. That's the bit we just read, verses 1 to 4. Uh, the psalm commences with thanking God, just thanking him for who he is. Yeah. Not for anything else, but for who he is. And then it gives us six notes, six, six things to praise God for as creator. God, give thanks to the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, you know, because yeah. he created the sun and the moon and the stars and the earth that we live in and the water and the sea. And the, Oh, give thanks to God. And then after those six, it gives six more uh, areas of thanksgiving uh, as it talks about the, the deliverance of the children of Israel from Egypt. And for us, the deliverance, our deliverance from the bondage of sin and Satan and the old way and the old yes. man, we get to give thanks to God for that. And then after that, it gives seven uh, areas of thanksgiving for the journey of the children of Israel, particularly through the wilderness and their entrance into Canaan. And for us, you know, that means when we, <laughs> it gives thanks to God for the times we've gone through the wilderness. And each of us has, or have gone through those, what is the wilderness? The wilderness is a hard, barren mm -hmm. place where it just feels like there's nothing happening. You're in the desert yeah. of whatever's going on in your life. You can't see any progress. And you're thirsty, you know, yeah. and, and, and it's heat, the heat of the pressure, the heat of the thing that's going on in your life is on you. You feel the heat. Oh, give thanks to God. Yes. Give thanks to God even in that. And you may say, oh, Michelle, I don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I genuinely, I genuinely, and I'm really, I'm being honest, I don't feel like it. And the truth is, as you said, we walk by faith. We walk by faith, by trusting in God and not by sight. Not what it feels like, yeah. not what it looks like. Um, and, and, you know, as, as we we're saying, many people have been through some very, very difficult times, even through this last 18, 18 months. And you say, and, and, and some may say, well, I don't feel an attitude of thanksgiving to God because of what I've gone through. I, you know, there are some people saying, if you get to the bottom of it, the reason that they don't, you don't feel thanksgiving to God or giving God thanks is because you think God doesn't deserve it. You think, God, how could you let me yeah. go through this? How could you let, how could you allow this yeah. person to pass away, to die? How could you allow this? How could you allow me not to have a job? How could you allow, how could, and it's the blame, you know, yeah. how could you let this happen to me? This, yeah. How could you, you don't deserve, if you're, if you're really honest with yourself, it's like, and I'm not giving thanks to God because yeah. he don't deserve yeah. me and to give him thanks. And sometimes it's not even what, what has happened to you. You might look at someone else. <laughs> oh boy, and, that's good. And you, you're that's offended good. at God. Because of what, what you see someone else, else going, going through. through. Oh, boy. Let me tell you. Oh, boy. Yeah, you've taken, over, you've taken an, an offense over what somebody else has gone through. Yeah, yeah. And you hold it. And you, you're holding you're it against, against God, God. Yeah. because of what yeah. my God is talking to somebody today. <sighs> the thing is, if you stay, if any of us stay in that mindset, you're stuck there. Yeah. And you'll just stay there. You will stay. Listen, you will stay there and it will affect everything in your life. Yeah. You won't even be able to minister to that person that you feel so sorry for. Yeah. You won't be able to even minister or serve or help them in an effective way because you, you stopped up. You stopped up. You're offended at God. Yeah. And, and just stay with this teaching because it's going to set you free from that if you want to be free from that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, we're going to talk about a little bit, a, a story um, that's found in Luke chapter 17. And Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. This is around verse, verse 13 or so. 
um, 12, 13 of Luke 17. And Jesus is on his way. So I'm just giving some mm -hmm. uh, back story, yeah, you know. Context. So context, that's right. That's the right word. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. And he's going into a village. He's on his way to Jerusalem. And on his way, he's going into mm -hmm. a village. And remember, Jesus, how they traveled that time, they walked. Yeah. You know, and it was sandy and dusty and all that and all, you know. So, so you know, he wasn't driving in a limo, you know. And so, you know, he, he may have been, he may or may, have, may not have been tired. But I'm not saying, the word doesn't say that. But you just to get context yeah. that... You know, he was a person, yeah. right? And he's, he's on his way to Jerusalem, and he's going into a village on the way. And he was met by 10 lepers who, who stood at a distance, because this is important to realize. Uh, le leprosy at that time was, you were... It's incurable, it, yeah, and it was, uh, yeah, yeah, contagious, very contagious. Contagious, you know, it's like COVID, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, people didn't want to be around. Yeah. They yeah. couldn't be. Around. It was yeah. It was unlawful. For it them. was unlawful. Yeah. It was unlawful for those who had this disease to be around other people, mm -hmm. and other people didn't want to be around. Yeah, and then too, and if if, uh, if someone who didn't have it yes uh, approached someone or touched someone who was who yes. had leprosy, mm -hmm. they were unclean too. The, yes. they, they were clean before. Yes, and they become unclean. Yes. So, so they're denied access to the temple. To the temple, they, denied, they, denied yeah. access even into the home. Yeah, they had to go through required rituals. Required to go through, yeah, required to separate themselves separate for a time. Separate themselves, quarantine. Yeah. yeah, yeah, separate themselves, yeah. quarantine. Separate <laughs> themselves for a period of time yeah. and, and do certain things and certain, all kinds of certain things, including certain sacrifices and stuff, yeah. and until they were deemed to be clean. Yeah. And um, and so to the lepers, right? And so he's going into the village. Before he gets into the village, he meets these ten lepers because the ten lepers aren't in the village. They can't be. They're outside the village. And they stood at a distance from him. Mm -hmm. And they raised up, listen to this, they raised up their voices and called, called out to Jesus. They said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Note the words. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Oh, that can preach, but I can't go there right now. Mm. They didn't say, Jesus, how come we have this? Yeah. Jesus, how, you know, we love God. How come we got this? You know, how come? They didn't complain. They said, Jesus, have mercy on us. Look at what happens. Luke chapter 17, verses 14 to 19. And it says in verse 14, and when he saw them, whew, he saw them, come on, somebody. He saw them because they cried out to him. Mm -hmm. If you're in that situation that we were talking about and you feel, oh God, why did you come, come you, did, how come you let this happen to me or to somebody else or my mother or my father or my mm -hmm. cousin or whoever, or my friend, how could you... Put all that down yeah. and just say, Jesus, have mercy upon me. And verse 14, and when he saw them, he said to them, go at once and show yourself to the priests. I'm going to pause right there. Listen to what he says. Go at once and show yourselves to the priests. Hmm. You see, what would happen is if somebody contracted leprosy um, and they got better, yeah. let's put it this way, and they were better of it, what they would have to do is go to the priest to have the priest examine them. Yeah. And when the priest examines them, they and they get and they do their sacrifices and stuff for the purifying then they would actually get a certificate to say that they they yes they had leprosy but now they are cured of it yeah and they would get certificates so that they can go back to their homes and back to their villages and go back to work and go back to be around people mm -hmm. and they could show them yeah i had i had it but this yeah. is my certificate right but listen and listen what jesus says he didn't say be healed 
in the name of Jesus be healed. Yeah. He just says, this is the answer he gave them. Jesus have mercy on me. And he says to them, go at once, go at once and show yourselves to the priest. And it goes on to say, and as they went, they were cured and made healed. As they went, yeah. as they did what he said to do. Yeah. As they, they went. They, yeah. When he said that, there was no change yeah. in their bodies. No change. I don't know if it was the first step, the second step, the tenth step, the twentieth step. It doesn't say. But as they went, they were on their way. Listen, they, these people had leprosy. And at God's word, they turned around and they were headed to the priest regardless of what it mm -hmm. looked like. Yeah. But it says, as they went, yeah. they were cured and made clean. Oh, boy. Just do what he says. Yeah. Just do what he says. Verse 15 that says, then one of them, because remember it was 10, then one of them, upon seeing that he was cured, turned back, recognizing and thanking and praising God with a loud voice. And one of them out of the 10, when he saw what happened, they hadn't, he hadn't gone there yet. Yeah. When he saw what happened, he turned back and went back and recognizing and thanking and praising God with a loud voice. I've got something to say about that. You know, normally when we have, when we have problems, yeah. loud, we're yeah. loud about it. We're loud. We're praying, yeah. we're asking God what happened. We're talking with our friend. Everybody says, how are you doing? The first thing that comes out of your mouth is the problem. Yeah. The what is wrong? What is wrong? And we, spend, we spend a long time mm -hmm. talking about the problem. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes when we receive the breakthrough, we might spend five minutes, if so much, thanking God. Yeah. And so the problem, the talking about the problem, is loud, seems louder than the thanksgiving. Yeah. I want us to change that around. Yeah. When we get the breakthrough, I spend at least as much time. Yeah. 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 Praising God. Listen, he recognized and he gave thanks and praise to God with a loud voice. And, and, we say and. And. And he fell prostrate at Jesus' feet. He humbled himself before God, thanking him over and over. And it, oh boy. And it says, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus is going to address that later on in the, in the scripture. And he fell prostrate at Jesus' feet, thanking him over and over. Verse 17. Then Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh boy. And verse 18, he says, was there no one found to return to recognize and give thanks and praise to God except this, in the translation I'm using, which is the Amplified, except this alien? Mm -hmm. An alien was a foreigner. Yeah. So the Samaritans yeah. weren't, didn't, weren't of the nation. They, 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 weren't weren't Israelites. Of, yeah. is, they weren't Israelites. They weren't what they call purebred Israelites, yeah. right? They were a mixed race that yeah. lived in Samaria, which was an area right adjacent to. Yeah. And the, the Israelites looked down on them because they said, oh, you know, you're, yeah. not, you're not purebred, you know, you're mixed race and all these other things, you know. Yeah. It, we could go into that. But, but Jesus is saying, none of them came back. Mm -hmm. But this one. Yeah. This one came back. This one who feels like an outcast. Yeah. This one who's not part who's of the group. treated like an outcast. This yes. one who... Yeah, mm. who's a, not a Jew, not yeah. part of, of who we are. Mm -hmm. This one came back. And listen to this. And he... So, you see, that's what I say. Thanksgiving is massive to God. He takes notice. Mm -hmm. And he said to him, he said to the man, get up and go on your way. Your faith... Your trust and confidence that spring from your belief in God has restored you to health. Get up and go on your way. Your faith has restored you to health. To health. In another translation, it says, uh, many other translations, it says, your faith has made you whole. Yeah. Made you whole. When it says restored you to health, made you whole, that word is sozo. It's sozo. It has saved you. It's made you whole. Your faith has yeah. made you whole. 
Listen, something happened to that man. Yeah. Something happened to him Ooh, in that moment. Yeah. Something happened in his soul. Yeah. In, in the way he processes life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Something happened to him. Yeah. And you see, the, the other nine... Yeah. Listen, the other nine were cleansed. Yeah. Right? It yeah. says, as they went, they were... What, is, what was the phrasing? As they went, they were cured and made clean. They were cured and made clean. Yeah. If you know, if you happen to know anything about leprosy, about the disease of leprosy, during the process of it, you, lose, you can lose fingers... You can use your ears, use you your can nose, use nose, yeah. parts of your, literally parts of yeah. your body. You can yeah. use a whole limb. Yeah. Parts of your body just die rot away, away yeah. and rot away and you've lost it. So that even if somebody is cured or cleansed from it, they still have those, the, the, have the fingers missing, missing yeah. the part of the nose missing, part of the ear missing. They're clean, they've, they've been cured, but they yeah. have the scars of that thing. Yeah. What they lost is it's still lost. But this man, because of him turning back and going and thanking Jesus, prostrating himself, thanking him over and over. Jesus says, your faith has made you whole. I believe that man, whatever fingers were lost, yeah. grew back. Whatever yeah. part of his nose fell off, grew back. Whatever part of his ears were there, he grew back. Yeah. Whatever body part he'd lost, he was restored. He was made whole. That yeah, which was yeah. lost was restored to him. Come on, somebody. Because of a heart of thanksgiving, yeah. because of his heartfelt thanksgiving to God, he was made whole. And not only that, physically speaking, yes, he received it, but I believe something happened in that man's soul, in his spirit, so that when he went back to his life, mm-hmm. went back to his family, if he was married and had children, was it, go, went back to his family, went back to his village, village, he dealt, he led his life in a completely different way yeah. because of that experience he had with the Lord, and that would affect his wife, his children, his children would hear the testimony yeah. of what happened and his children's life would be changed because their whole mindset would be changed and then as his children grow up having this knowing this experience of what their father went through with the Lord yeah. they when they have children they would tell the story and you see how it redounds from generation to generation it affected would affect generation after generation after that one incident yeah my god attitude of thanksgiving. It's powerful. It's powerful. Yeah. It's powerful. And you see the other nine, the other nine not staying, it intimates um, that ingratitude is the common thing. Not yeah. being gratitude is common. Yeah. But having gratitude no, yeah. is uncommon. Nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. Don't return to say thank you. Yes. But thank God for what he's done. Yes. So a, li- a life of thanksgiving, a life of thanks living will affect your future. Mm-hmm. And the future of those around you and the future of your children and your children's children yeah. and your children's children's children. It will affect the people around you, the place. It will affect the atmosphere around you. Yeah. If you're on work and, and you go to go to work and when the, when things open and you do go to work or, or, or you know, you have co-workers that you, 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 you uh, 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 interact, uh, interact with. with maybe on, on Zoom calls or maybe on, yeah. or, you know, on your phone or something. And it's constant, maybe they're constantly complaining. It's constant complaining about this, about that, about that, and, da, 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 da. and you just have an attitude of thanksgiving, you will affect. Yeah. People might get irritated with and say, oh, blah, 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 blah. but eventually, I'm telling you, yeah. that seed sown in their lives. Yeah, it affects your present. And it affects your future. It does, it does. changes things now, and you know that it's going to change things in the future. Yes, yes. It'll affect you yes. and your life. It'll affect those around absolutely, you. Absolutely, absolutely. And I keep hearing it will affect your children and your children's children. Yeah. It will affect the generations to come after you. It will affect the, their children. It will affect their marriages because of the way they look when they get yeah. to the marriageable age. It will, oh my goodness. An attitude of gratitude also defies Satan. Listen, 
If it's one thing he wants you to do, it's to complain, be miserable, have a bear in your hair. Yeah. He wants that. He wants that. But when you have an attitude of gratitude yeah. and thanksgiving, it defies him. Yeah. Because you're submitted to God. Submit to God, and it's the way you resist the devil. Yeah. So you submit to God by having thanksgiving, an attitude of thanksgiving. And you, by just in doing that, you resist, resist the, the devil, devil. Yeah. and he must flee. Yeah. Come on, Tom. Remember, it's counter culture. Yeah. Counter culture. It's a renewal of our mind. Yeah. If Satan can get you complaining and uh, uh, whining about the, the situation you're going through mm. or that this happening around you, he has you in a vice, he has you in a trap. Absolutely. And the, the more you complain, the more he squeezes you. Yes. And he holds you. In yes, that place. Absolutely. It's a bondage that, that he's got you in. Yes. A trap. Yes. But if you start, if you choose to rejoice, if you choose to thank God. Yes. As you said, there's choose, freedom. Yeah. Choose. Yeah. 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 Freedom comes. Freedom. Freedom comes. Freedom. Liberty. Yeah. And I said, as I'm going to repeat again, a lifestyle of thanksgiving to God, thanks living will affect your present. It will affect your future and future of your children. And because of them being affected, the, the lives of your children's children. So let us be, this is what, this is what, this is, I'm, I'm at the end now. Thankful. Let us find ways, look for ways to give thanks to God of how he's brought you through the last 18 months. Because yeah. it will affect how you enter the new phase, yeah. this new era, this new season as we come out of this. And we're going to come out of it. We yeah. are going to come out of this. But find ways, be thanks, thankful to God for bringing us through the season. Yeah. However, it was hard or whether it was easy, you know, yeah. whether I can't imagine anybody it was easy for. But, you know, I'm just saying. Yeah. Whether it was very, very hard, whether you thought you were on your last or whether you just breeze through, you know, if there's anybody like that. Give thanks to God for the number of times and all the ways that he's pulled you through yeah. and caused you to have a roof over your head or, or whatever, whatever the things are. Give thanks to God. And let's in advance give thanks to God for the new season, yeah. for the future for what's coming down, for what's next, for how he's going to bring us through the new season yeah. as we come out of this. Yeah. There are some people, and you're watching this, and you've been asking God for more. You've been asking the Lord for more, more of him. Yeah. More of him. More of him. Uh, when I say more of him, I say more uh, uh, of uh, uh, a, a deeper relationship with him. That's what I mean. Mm. Uh, 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 a deeper relationship with him uh, that he would move through your life more mm -hmm. to affect other people for his kingdom. Yeah. And the key to that is an attitude of thanksgiving. Give him thanks for what 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 you have of him now, how he works through you now, give thanks to him for that. Yeah. Be joyful for that. Whatever the things you can do now, be thankful to him for that. Yeah. And it's the key to moving into more, into the, and, in, and into this new season. I'm going to end with this very short story. Uh, Robin and I were, we had a day a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, where we had to go to the bank and uh, we went to the bank, parked in front of the, in, in the car park of the bank. And uh, I went in to get to, 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 to the ATM, actually. I went in and then I came back out and I got in the car. When I got in the car, uh, Robin was in the, in the car the, 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 and he start, started the car, right? <laughs> and then I said, oh, no, 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 we forgot to deal with such and such and yeah. such. So he switched it off because I had to go back into the bank, went into the bank. Again, when I came back and he started the car, it wouldn't start. <laughs> Battery's dead. Okay. So we're sitting in the car, in the car park, and the battery's dead. Now, we on purpose, intentionally, now <laughs> I've got to give the context of this thing. It's not like we had a million dollars, you know? We're watching, 
we're watching what we spend and how much we you know we're thinking where we are we are trying to be good stewards of what we've got you know and it you know it's not a huge amount you know you know it's like you know enough said right and so now it's like oh the battery's dead At first there was silence, and then it was like, it's okay. Thank you, Lord. And we started to thank God. Thank you, Lord, that we are in the car park of the bank and not mm -hmm. outside on the road by the side of the road somewhere. Yeah. We, it's okay. You know, you're in, a, you're in a parking space. It's safe. And we were able to call a dear brother, Lindsay, and, and, and Pat, one of our just, oh, we just love them. And... They, he was, they were nearby. They said, I'll be there in 10 minutes. Yeah. Right? In ten, I'll be there in 10 minutes. No hesitation. No, I'll be there in 10 minutes. Now, before that, I'm telling you all the things we started giving thanks to God. Before that, Lindsay would not have been available. Yeah. Because he would have been at work, but his work situation has changed. So he was available. He could have said, I'll be there in 10 minutes. We just said, thank you, Lord. Thank you. And he came. They both came. And listen, it, it was, we just gave thanks to God. The, uh, Pat got out the car and she had the um, It was raining. Yeah. It was raining. She got out the car with the umbrella, asked the people who were parked next to us, because there was an empty spot beyond them, yeah. would they move? And would they would they be willing to just shift over to the other spot so that they can okay. pull up next to it? The people were like, "Fine, my God, thank you, Lord." Yeah. They were able, Pat and were able to pull up next to us, get the jumper cables, boom, boom, we started, and we were excited to see each other. We got to see each other and you know say certain things because we were supposed to have a meeting later on that day. We got to, and and they left. Car, the car was starting, running good. We were able to drive then to where we needed to go in order to have the battery mm -hmm. checked and, mm -hmm. and, and, and so forth. And there's a lot more I could give thanks. I can tell yeah. you there's more. There's more to that. There's more to that. But we just started thanking God. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you we were in the car park and we weren't on the side of the street. Thank you that somebody was able to come in 10 minutes. Thank you that, that, that we had there was a space next to us that they could pull up. That you might think, well, that's insignificant. That don't mean nothing. Are you kidding me? That's huge. So an attitude, a lifestyle of thanksgiving is what is it thanks living living yes. thanks living thanks living thanks living i could go into more i, I but i, I maybe I, oh, I should just hold that because we, we'll be here another half an hour if i if i tell you the whole story and so we're just we just so we are thankful to god for this message that we get to share with you mm -hmm. and with ourselves to remind us and to keep us fresh in that thanksgiving and we're excited to know as you do this as you make the shift on purpose intentionally we cooperate with the holy spirit on this as you do that how how god is going to open up things for you because he he oh man it's important yeah. it's his heart an attitude of thanksgiving so let's pray father we th thank you thank you for you thank you for who you are Thank you for your love, for you are good and your loving kindness and your mercy endures forever and forever and forever and forever. We want to thank you for, we thank you right now, right this minute, we thank you for all the times you've pulled us through when we thought there was no way, when, when, we, when we thought there was no way out, you caused water to come out of a rock for the children of Israel. You've done it for us in different ways. You've caused us to have manna every day. You told, caused us to have food every day. You, and, and we just want to thank you. We're not going to complain that it's whatever it is. You know, there's some people, I'm going to say some people, you, maybe you're eating the same thing every day. Maybe it's bake or roti every day, you know, because of mm -hmm. the situation you're just eating. Just give thanks to God for that. Yeah. And we thank you, Father, 
for your grace and your mercy for bringing us through and you continue you're so faithful and thank you father for the new area the new season this new time that we're going to enter into as a nation and as people and as the church we thank you in advance for it we trust you lord for you are good and your mercy and loving kindness endures forever and for those who are for asking more of you they're asking for more of you in their lives father thank you for opening up the windows of heaven over their heads that they walk in a new dimension of relationship with you through your holy spirit and by your word in jesus name amen amen and amen, amen. amen.